guys, I'm Ready Kid here back again. How's everybody doing? And today, guys, continuing uh, more of my uh, Patreon requests uh, for my patrons. And again, like I said, I pushed a couple of patrons request who have that tier to request things from me. Um, I pushed them back and pushed their like horror themed uh, patrons request to the front because it's spooky season so let's do this um this one comes from the yin and yang lad and he wanted to know uh what are i uh, just want to make sure what are some of what are some of my favorite uh horror anthology films i do like a good anthology film um i like when uh horror films they're telling a, a full narrative but just in a different way of films of filming and it may lead to the end of the film where it revealed or something like that not all of them do it but some of them do there are there are some good ones and there are some bad ones um but if you don't know like what's an anthology what what is the example of an anthology film uh the the best one of the best is probably still to this day uh, creep show uh, that is a that's an anthology though that's an anthology uh, horror film and uh, you best believe that's on the list um, yin and yang lad did not give me a specific number so I decided to maybe go f six or five or so I really don't want to go five because that's an odd number Ugh. but uh, let's do this shall we okay um, I'm sorry guys, like look, I, I got an OCD about odd numbers, but in the meantime, um, let, let's, 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 uh, kick this off with number one, uh, Tales from the Dark Side. Uh, they did a movie in the early nineties, uh, Tales from the Dark Side was a TV series as well, but, um, they did a, they did a, um, they did a movie. Uh, and probably one of my favorite stories, um, it, it involved, I believe, a young, um, one of the Lawrence brothers. I think it was Martin. Uh, I think it was Martin Lawrence, not, not the comedian, but Joey Lawrence's brother. Um, oh, Matthew, excuse me, uh, Matthew Lawrence. And he was, um, being fattened up by a witch and she was going to um, try to eat him and things like so he had to outthink her and because he had her chained up and everything um, so it was that was really cool I remember that that uh, that story really well um, but yeah um, Tales from the Dark Side I, I enjoy it very much as a uh, one of my favorite uh, anthology horror films uh, Next on the list we are going to go with is uh, Cat Eyes. This came out in 1985, and this was a adaptation of Stephen King's uh, short films, um, not short films, short stories. Um, one of them was around the, the story Night Shift. What's cool about this story, and it's got a young Drew Barrymore in it, so she's like, she's like what, nine in this or so? Um, by the time when I saw this film, because by the t when it first came out, I was like three, so I didn't see it until I was I was like ten or twelve. So, but when I saw it, I thought it was cool because I liked the perspective of it. The perspective of it is you're you're seeing these the the horror and these trolls and every all these monsters through the eyes of a cat who plays in the third in the third story. He he the cat is the titular hero so it's really cool um that uh when you think about it i haven't seen cat eyes in a in a while though but it it was a it was fun i enjoyed it very much and um i need to check it out again but i do remember it, that it was seen through the eyes of a, of a cat so it was, it was really cool um uh, number number three. These are not in any specific order. I'm just I'm just doing it. They're not ranked this way. I'm just 
doing it. Uh, number three, we're going to go with um, Tales from the Hood, the original one from 1995. I remember when this movie came out, this was produced by uh, Spike Lee, but it was directed by um, uh, Rusty Col uh, Kondorf. I hope I'm saying his name right. Um, this was a good anthology um, because as someone of... of a person of color or someone who's black this really focused on our community in a sense they used the horror backdrop as a lot of themes that were going on uh, domestic dispute domestic domestic violence child abuse uh, black on black crime um, drug use um, things like that and a lot of the stories uh, played a, a big role, but the, the overarching center of it is it was the late, great uh, Clarence Williams III. He's a, he's a mortician, uh, and he found this thing, of these drugs, and he is willing to give them to these, 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 these gangsters. And, you know, he comes in and he just looks creepy, but he, and, but, well, throughout the, the movie we understand what's really going on. Um, my favorite out of the 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 um, stories was um, I think one of them was the monster that had uh, David Alan Greer in that film and he, it, it was a different take on Mr. Greer. He usually David Alan Greer is known for being a comedian and you know all this and you know laughs and joy and living color of course but here he was a monster he was literally legitimately a monster and he was abusive he he would beat his his uh his i guess was was his stepson or so i don't think he was a stepson but he would just beat him and his son the boy who was played by i'm forgetting the, the boy's name but he played young michael jordan in space jam he could he would see him as a monster uh, and it was really good, and and he would draw pictures, and the, and somehow when he would squish the picture, he would squish the monster and things like that. That was a good one. Another good one was the first uh, where they, where we see a rookie cop. He's a black cop, and he witnesses three of his other fellow officers who are white beat up a a known uh, politician who was black. And it kind of reminds you of the Rodney King uh, riots. And instead of doing something about it, he just let it go. And they ended up killing him. They beat him down. They put, like, gave him drugs like like he... And they made it seem like he, it was a suicide. He, he was on drugs, so he killed himself. And then that, that politician came back. The, the cop's name was Clarence. And he basically um, came back as a zombie and... He killed the cops, but at the end, which I really loved, was when Clarence is with the dead politician, and he says, "You know, is, you know, is you got what you needed, brother?" And and he just lifts him up, and he's like, "Where were you when I needed you, brother?" And I'm like, and it's it's a really good story because it it basically focuses on sometimes doing the right thing or sometimes coming over to the to the right side isn't always going to work you know he should have done this from the get-go but he didn't there were a lot of good stories in uh tales from the hood and then after that the other the other uh there were three two sequels after that i didn't care for those other two sequels even though uh clarence williams the third he didn't come back to replace his role uh they got Keith David to do it. And that that was the only saving grace of of those. But other than that, the the, the other sequels sucked. I didn't care for them. The first one was great. Um, I, another one of my favorite is is the 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 dolls, the the slave dolls. This uh, former KKK member he he bought this plantation, and this lady who also knew Voodoo. She put the souls of all the dead slaves into these little dolls, and these dolls came to life, and 
killed the politician and thing. It was pretty cool. I enjoyed it because it was it was stop motion and everything. Like it was really cool. Um, but over the overarching story was that the three gangsters were dead. They didn't know they were dead and they were in hell. And Clarence, Clarence Williams III's character was actually the devil. And his design was very cancerous. He looked, he looked very, just oh, it was nasty looking. So, but it was a good. It was good. Uh, but I love, uh, I love Tales from the from the Hood, even though it didn't do well at the box office. But it it was it was a good movie. It's one of those movies that you you, you watch and you're like, why did this do good? You know, maybe because it was the themes that they were touching on. But yeah, it was good. And I'm sorry I talked a lot about that, but. This one definitely needed to be talked about a lot. Uh, so we move on uh, to number four. And number four on the list uh, we're going to go is with VHS. Uh, love VHS. I still need to watch VHS, VHS Beyond. I know they just uh, did another one. VHS has been going on now for a while now. I, I think Shudder took over. Took their, their took over like the projects now. I still need to watch the the latest one, but the first, the first two, they I believe they were the only two that came on theaters, I believe. But VHS was great. Uh, VHS was another film uh, anthology film that was great. Um, it told the story of these 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 lunkheads that uh, had needed was getting a job of they need to go to this house, get this tape, and that was it. But Every time they put on a different tape, we saw a different story. The stories that stood out were definitely one being Amateur Night, which focused on um, this actress. I'm forgetting the actress's name. It, she was great in this. Like she sold everything with her eyes. Excuse me. And those were her real eyes too. I thought they, her eyes were digital to make her look big, but no, they were they were devious and scary looking. Basically, the whole role was amateur night was these three guys were going to bring home some chip, bring back to their, uh, go from bar to bar, bar hopping and trying to get laid. Pretty much what it was. And unfortunately, they bring home a girl named Lily who turned out to be more than meets the eye. And you see this when she is watching this, the guy, Clint, he was the one that had the, the camera and his glasses and she would just follow him everywhere and and the only word she would say to him was i like you like she would just and her eyes would get so big when she said so she'd be like i like you and at first you don't hear what she's saying and then cuz they're in a bar and then she's then she says it again i like you and when they take her back everything just goes to hell um basically she turns out to be basically a succubus she she was a succubus to a degree um and you like, and then of course, um, she kills, uh, she kills uh, two of his boys. She rips this dude's uh, off and throws it at him, and he runs away, and he ends up breaking his his wrist on his own. Like you literally see him fall down, and his wrist is you see bones coming out of the wrist, and all of a sudden, you see Lily. Her head just peeks out from by the. It's it's creepy too. When she comes down, she's crawling down the stairs, all bloodied and everything, and she's still like, "I like you." And she tries to give him fellatio, and she, when he she sees that he's not into it, she's like, "No like." And then she goes in the corner and she gets all she's all screaming and she's. She start crying and then she he runs away and you hear this really guttering roar and then he tries to get help from the hotel and all of a sudden you just see her come and grab him and when he looks up you just see she's fully transformed into like her winged form VHS was good the, the first two were really good I didn't care for the third one when when they when Shutter took over when they started doing like the different numbers like VHS uh, uh, 95 you know 84 all those those were good but once went viral I hated um, and a couple other ones but 
one and two were really good. Uh, so when I put both one and two are great. So yeah, VHS. Uh, <laughs> it was a good one. Uh, the next one on the list. Um, next one on the list is Trick or Treat. Uh, if you've never seen Trick or Treat, uh, this one this came out in 2007, I believe 2007, and um, it focused on everything was kind of centered around Halloween and the concept of taking down your all your decorations or your jacket before Halloween is completely over, and you may get a knock on the door from this little jack-o'-lantern like character and uh it gets creepy from there um there were a lot of uh pretty interesting um uh actors and actresses i remember uh i believe uh um i forget her name the actress who played uh rogue she was in this uh anna paquin there we go anna paquin she was in this and we find out what she that was probably one of the interesting things like her girlfriends are trying to get her to make out with this guy and get this guy and then next you know what happens is she's a fucking werewolf and they they kill her and i'm like what the fuck and like she's like this is my first time and then he's like yeah and then she, you just see her wolf out and eat and just kill him i was like what the hell it was really cool it was it was interesting but it was just that just threw me off but trick or treat was really good i really enjoyed that i think michael uh uh, Dor Dorvinty, um he directed this, but it was a really good. I haven't. That's another film. I just recently watched it again, and I just was like, yeah, it still it still holds up. It's still fun. Uh, so yes, I, I enjoyed uh, Trick or Treat. Very good. If you've never seen Trick or Treat, I do, I do recommend it. It was it was good. It's a good it's a good anthology. Uh, and last but not least, I couldn't not have this on the list. But like I said before, Creep Show, uh, Creep Show, which was this was direct Creep Show was directed by uh, George Romano. The first one, um, there was two, and then of course there's a TV series. Uh, I like them both, uh, but I think the first one had better stories than well, two had some good stories too. I love the story with the Native American, uh, like, statue that came to life and took revenge on uh, the, the assholes that killed uh, the, uh, killed the, um, the store owners, he, and that was really cool, like, he was, he scalped this one guy, it was so cool, I was like, yeah, um, but I still would say the first, the first one had the best, like, you had some big time actors that would go on to be really big in this movie. Like in the first movie, like you got Leslie Nielsen playing like the villain in this. Uh, you had Ted Danson, uh, Ed Harris was in this. I mean, these are legends, and they were in this movie. Um, I love that the 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 uh, Leslie Nielsen one. He basically finds out Ted Danson uh, had an affair with his wife. And he he basically killed his wife, drowned her, put he made her dig a hole, and he put her in in the hole and bury herself when the tide's coming in. So she basically drowned, and he told Ted Zanson to do it too. And he what what happened later is is that Ted Danson and his wife and the the, the, the person that he had an affair with. They came back as these, like, creepy, uh, like, sea zombies. And, and Leslie Nielsen tried to shoot all, just, just, just saw seawater coming out of them. It was like, it was like, and they just came out and, and they were just like, you have to hold your breath. It was, it was, it was the funniest thing. It, it was good. And another one of my favorite is the, the whole, um. I think it was the the first story. It was it was about you know um, this whole fam this rich family. I think they were um, s celebrating or mourning their uncle or dad's death. Or it was, and he was always screaming, "Where's my cake?" 
and he came back as a zombie and killed everybody. And he's like, yeah, I got my cake. It's the, it's the, it's the, it's crazy. It was it was pretty pretty funny. Um, and I, what I loved about the the concept also is because the fact is, it it uh it had like a comic vibe to it. So like whenever they would move on to it was like you saw like comic panels. It was really cool. And even the overarching stories were good. Like the one was with the boy, his dad threw away his comic book and he's like, throw away my comic book and he he got a voodoo doll. He was he it was just again, when it comes to horror, they when it comes to Hollywood, they completely uh, bum, uh, pretty much ostracize and and really throw voodoo into that factor of being that it's evil when it's truly not. If you really do the history of voodoo, it's not. So, but in this, it, it was played up for that. Um, it, it was they just had so many a lot just so many legends in this and then in this and the sequel was even good too the sequel was was just as good i didn't say it was bad but it was fun too i mean like i said the one with the the it was the shop owner these shop owners they they you know had like a stationary store this older couple and outside the couple was a, a statue of a of a chief a, a native american chief and he would stand there and hold you know he holds it, and every time the store owner would come out there and put on like his war paint out of respect to him, and he would talk to him like, and and then of course there would be there were, there was a, a very well known Native American actor in there who's been in a lot of films. If you saw him, you know who I'm talking. About. If you've seen him, you know what I'm talking about. Um, and he would come by and you know speak the language. I'm not sure what tribe he was supposed to be. Uh, but it was really cool, and they got killed. What was really messed up was they got killed by um, someone they knew, and he was a part of uh, the the tribe, and he wanted to go to Hollywood because he he had he thought he had the look, and he had his his hair, and so this uh, Native American came to life. The the the, the wooden the wooden um. The, the wooden statue he came to life one day and to get revenge to, to honor the people that put, you know took care of him and he came to life and you saw him put on his war paint he, he put it back on he picked up his tomahawk and then he just made this war cry and it was and he, he just oh, and he came and he, he he tracked every guy down he one of them was just fat and looked like a tub of lard and he caught this guy with a bow and arrow he just three times I think it was three arrows in the stomach pop 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 another guy he um he tried to sneak up on him uh and then the last guy like I said was the from his tribe and he it was almost like you betrayed us and you know he and he caught him and instead of he did the instead of killing him killing him he scalped him and then you saw at the end he had his his scalp, his hair, all, and he just saw the the bloody scalp in his hand, and and it, and just standing there, just and the, the the elder elder chief when he came by, he noticed it, and he was just like, and he, I think he said something in in his language, in the language, and it was it was just like scary. Uh, another one was the the like tar monster that, and that was fun. Like Creep Show was great. Creep Show was fun. I love Creep Show, um, and of course, yes, even Stephen King was in one of the episodes, which was just ter I felt so bad for Stephen King in that. Uh, but outside of that, guys, those are some of my favorite um, anthology horror films. Uh, there's a lot more, but those are definitely some that I love. Uh, I, I'm I, sorry I ran off at the mouth, but you know, guys, look, I I love. The, um, when you do a good anthology I, and I hope we get more you know horror writers and icons to do more of them I mean like I said VHS still puts out that franchise is still putting out horror you know anthology the latest one that came out was called VHS Beyond 
and I think it focuses on more alien based than anything but yeah they, they all are fun and like I said there's some from the 70s and even from the 60s that I, I want to check out that star like Vincent Price and things like that but uh if you've seen any of these movies, tell me if you, you enjoyed them and tell them if you didn't. Uh, are these some of your favorite anthology horror films? And if not, leave them in the comment section down below. I would love to hear what you guys think. But outside of that, thank you, Yin and Yang Lad, for this uh, request. I appreciate it. And thank you for continuing your patron. Uh, I will see you guys next time. Deuces. <laughs>